The hook I am using today is a Gamagatsu B10S in size 2, and the thread is Danville's 210 flat waxed in white. Build a small thread base to help secure the dumbbell eye. Now add a lead dumbbell eye. You want lead because you need the weight to get this fly to flip over. Add a bit of super glue to keep the eye from spinning. Now pull out some starburst dubbing and cut it in half. Tie it in so it wraps around the hook shank, right in the center of the clump. Then pull back the front fibers and tie in rearward as well. And do this again. You know, I really should have waited for the super glue to dry. Continue doing this until you reach the lead eyes. If you don't have starburst dubbing, ice dub could work as well. Now place a small amount on top of the dumbbell eyes. Then make X wraps around the eyes to get the fiber to lay on top of the eyes. Now measure out a white magnum rabbit zonker so it extends out to about two times the hook shank length. Trim it to size, then cut the tail end of the zonker so it comes to a point, like so. Now, measure to find where the zonker will rest on the hook, and push that spot through the hook point, then take the hook off the vise and pull it up so it lays flat. As you can see, the zonker extends out past the hook eye, and that's what you want. Tie the front of the zonker in tightly, then trim off the excess. As you can see, the fibers in the front are much more bushy this way. Now trim up the starburst fiber to the length that you want. I made my own dubbing to match laser dub. As you can see, it is very similar, in fact, almost identical. Pull apart the fibers of a tan color dubbing. This aligns those fibers to the same direction. If you want to see how to make this, I have a video that I linked in the description section. Now clump together and pull out the loose fibers like so. Place on top of your hook shank and tie the clump in right in the center. Now do the same thing with orange, pink, or red dubbing as well. Now you're going to want to pull back the dubbing fibers that are facing forward and tie a small thread dam in front of the fibers to keep them angling rearward. Trim up the orange dubbing square, and this will help mimic a gill, and spread the dubbing out a little bit. Now pull out some gray or white dubbing, in this case, I am actually using laser dubbing just to show you how close this stuff is to my own homemade dubbing. Prepare the fibers like the other dubbing clumps and tie it in in the same manner. Now prepare some olive dubbing and tie it in as well. And pull back all the fibers again and tie another thread dam in front of it. Now you can whip finish your fly.
Now this is very important. You really need to pick out all the fibers. This helps mix them together. Now grab a stiff toothbrush and remove the fly from your vise. You're going to want to comb the fibers forward and then rearward. This will further mix the fibers together and smooth out the dubbing. Now, trim up the dubbing a bit if need be. You're basically done, and this fly is totally fishable now. However, I like doing one last step, and that is add some flexible UV curing resin to the fly. I am using Solares Flex Formula. This is flexible when cured, and has no tackiness to it. Put a little on the head of the fly, and then take your bodkin and smear it rearward. Make sure the head of the fly is shaped the way you want before curing the resin into place. As you can see, this flexible resin really helps the fly keep its shape, but it also allows the dubbing to move out of the way of any hook set. This fly moves really nicely in the water and has a bit of a jigging action. Over time, the tail will stop floating and have a bit more fluid motion to the fly. Because the hook point is up, it will be almost snag-proof, which is great for fishing lots of cover. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe. Check out my description section for more info and a list of materials used today. Now, go catch some fish.